All right, well, thanks everyone for coming. I appreciate you guys coming. Uh, we're here at McGinnis. I'm here with Howie Dameron, who is the inventor of HDI 2500, and he is also the head of R&D for Fuelox Infinity Loops. Uh, with us, joining us today is Les Lohr of McGinnis. He is the construction superintendent, and he is the brains behind the operation when it comes to reliability and sustainability. Uh, first question I really have, Mr. Dameron, what is this HDI 2500? Well, HDI 2500 is a new concept and con is controlling the friction factors, uh, friction and wear. It goes way beyond the greatest potentials of any type of lubrication, regardless of what it is, it makes no difference. Um, so we figured here, when Les contacted me in 2005, this would be the greatest place in the world to be able to move from theory to POC, which stands for proof of concept. So no lubricant has ever worked here. Nothing that he ever treated, greases, only gave him a between five to 20% sustainable properties to whatever he was trying to reduce the friction and wear on. So when he contacted me first in 2005, I'm gonna tell you how many years that's been. You're showing it, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we uh, started it in 2005. First things we did was the rail tracks. And I remember the day you called me and you said, my rail tracks are sticking and disintegrating. Yeah, we were pulling slivers quarter inch wide to 16 inches long as we were moving those barges along the rail system due to the fact that we had to take the suspension off of these rail cars we modified and make them solid to take away. So they wouldn't align ourselves, set any little misalignment, it would just peel off the steel on the tracks. Which means it, it moves back and forth. So when they went straight to the straight, well, that helped some, but it was still stiction caused by friction. So he asked me if it worked, and I was just honest. I said, I don't know. I've never dealt with weights like this. I remember you said, I said, what is the weight? You said, uh, from 300 tons to 2,800 tons. I went, dear Lord. So we treated the tracks. And it worked. Yeah, it immediately stopped peeling the steel. Yeah. I mean, if we wouldn't have found something to solve the problem, we would have changed the rails out several times. So, let's back up for one second. What exactly does McGinnis do here? Like, we have the, the, one of the top automated paint and blast facilities in the United States. It's a really harsh environment. We use steel beads to do the blasting. We recoup it. We clean it, we use the beads again. You have rust, paint, steel beads, metal flying around in the area where we do the blasting. And we have a chain driven system that moves the bar so at the right rates, so the blasting coverage is right. We were having, you know, the chain wear was significant, so we also treated the chain with this product. So you're, you're pulling up the barges on these chains and you're repairing them to be put back in. But you're also painting and blasting and cleaning them? Yes. Is that right? It's brought up one end and then it goes through the paint shop and then it's brought back down on this side of where we're sitting and put back in the water. It's like the most uh, incredible uh, automated car washes you can get. That's basically why it works. Yeah. And if there are repairs to do before or after we blast, because sometimes you open up holes or find problems, we do those repairs at the upper end and we bring them back through. But okay. that's one of the most, I mean, in, as far as environments, bad environments for lubrication, we're going in and out of water constantly with our dollies. They're running also going through under the barges in paint and blast. All that debris and metal dust is getting into your bearing areas. 
and call somewhere. Yeah. We actually started here, we just jumped from one thing to another, which yeah. is probably it. Which exa exactly, like Les says, I mean, all these years down here, it was known as either the innovation, uh, Howie's Honey, uh, but its scientific name has always been HDI-2500, which stands for Hardened Deformationed Interfaces and it lasts up to 2,500 degrees. Well, this is the actual product that we started with right here today. Uh, you all, we've come up with the name of Infinity LFE. Stands for Liquid Friction Eliminator, which is the marketed name for the HDI 2500. So the tracks, then we started looking at all of the ways of simplicity of applying the product. So that's when we came up with this. Today it's the Super Loop. And it's what they sprayed on the tracks, the cables, everything. If you read the, uh, the long, long case study that Les and the guys here did at McGinnis on trying to establish exactly how long it would sustain, well, we used this grease in the uh, wheel bearings. And would you, you can read that, that they put it over. So each of these products actually came from this facility since 2005. We would see it work, and then it would just last and last and last. But Les would call me as he was testing down here, and I'd be somewhere else in the world, he would be testing it, and you called me and you said, we have a Cummings engine. To explain that. Yes, we treated the engine lubricants with this product probably six months prior to the incident. We were all floating in Huntington, which is about an hour from here. We had about four barge loads of railroad ties to load up. So we start picking them up, loading them, and you're continuously running the crane wide open, cycling the booms. About four days into it, the crane starts smoking, the exhaust on the crane. So we shut it down, went back in there, it was blowing water out of dipstick tube. So we were getting water into the crankcase, which was causing it to lose power. I was over maintenance for years, so I know what water does to an engine, usually the swells your crank to the bearings from the friction. So we had treated it with his lubrication. I thought, well, this is a good time to find out how good it is. So we drained the water out, ran it the rest of the day. It ran just as well as it did before the incident happened. Checked it the next morning. I think we changed oil in it that day because it was real milky. Ran it another 12 to 14 hours till it starts smoking, losing power again, and we did this for 30 days. The engine was still running when we pulled it. I wanted to go ahead and replace it because I knew we had a problem, needed to get it fixed, so I put it under the shed up there. Wanted to tear it down and see what it looked like inside, but before, if it laid around six months, I was busy. They scrapped the engine before I got to it, but I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it's unbelievable, and that's what I tell everybody when I talk to them. You just have to try it. Wow. What other applications are unbelievable thing 